Welcome back to coverage of the New Capenna Championship. I'm Amy Looney alongside Corey Baumeister. We just had one amazingly fast match. They were all in blitz mode. So we are on to our second feature match, Corey. It is going to be Ian Burrell versus Luis Scott Vargas, Selesnia Company versus is it phoenix now selesnia company this deck tell me a little bit about it because there are some spicy meatballs in this one that's gonna really annoy luis yeah absolutely selesnia company you know we've seen versions that is like selesnia humans that had some more tribal themes to them with thalia thalia's lieutenant that kind of stuff this one's a little different and instead of all the synergies you have with humans it's just all hate cards for almost specifically <laughs> arc light phoenix you look you see arc out of Amiri in the hand you see paulo elite spellbinder and then you see scavenging ooze there's plenty more hate to uh, come in this list as well for Phoenix. So Luis Scott Vargas had to have looked at this deck list and been like, uh, gulp? Like, that is a <laughs> lot of hate. It's like, really? You're doing yeah. this? I, I, I would yeah. be feeling that if I were in the Luis's shoes right now, but he is a seasoned professional. Nothing's <laughs> going to uh, get under his skin. As we get things going here, we've got a Dragon's Rage Chandler and a Ledger Shredded down here for Luis. Now, scavenging ooze, the problem bug, as uh, <laughs> that's, well, it's a noose. That's going to be quite the nuisance for a graveyard strategy such as Is It Phoenix. So where do we go to from here? Yeah, it's pretty interesting because this is like the one turn where you can have a little bit of a big turn by playing Faithless Looting, you know, maybe trying to get something going in your graveyard. Uh, not really a chance you're gonna be able to hit Delirium, but at least just getting your creatures a little bit larger <laughs> and trying to find something here, but this just feels like one turn where you get a good hit in, uh, and yeah, you don't even really want to attack with this Dragon Rage Channeler and trade a 1-1 mm -hmm. Spirit. And looking at that graveyard, kind of a sad graveyard. <laughs> Nothing for the ooze to munch on. That's a field spirit. Yeah, <laughs> I was saying a little bad. more sad from Luis Scott Vargas, <laughs> like no real action, <laughs> no real close to delirium or anything like that. Oh no. Uh, one really good draw, though, for Ian here is this copy of Talia, Guardian of Thraben, which is going to stifle whatever plans Luis Scott Vargas has in terms of just, you know, mana efficiency. All your one spells become two mana spells, and that's just not great. Yeah, this uh, style of deck that Ian Burrell has brought is really kind of more of this hate bear strategy. All these cards mm -hmm. that are just so tricky to play against, Thalia, Archon, Elite Spellbinder, all this stuff just makes adds up to one huge problem for Is It Phoenix decks, you know, and this is going to be maybe a little bit of a, um, you know, a polarizing matchups when it comes to very good against Phoenix, but if you get paired against, let's say, Golgari Food, probably not exactly what Ian wants to play against. Yeah. Now, this is quite a decent situation here for Luis. Sure, you can even play one spell right now, but the Unholy Heat can take care of the Scoos. So he can say, yeah. excuse me, coming through with whatever graveyard nonsense he's got. There's no green mana up at the moment. Can make a Ledger Shredder into a 3-3 and keep swinging. You know, he's got that going for him. Three toughness yeah. is relevant in this matchup. That is absolutely big. And with no creatures in the graveyard before that, I like uh, Ian's play of just playing something out because Scavenging Ooze could only eat a Faithless Looting or something. And that is, yeah. you know, just okay here, so... Yeah. Symmetry Sage uh, with its boost uh, kind of showing off a little bit here because this is one way to <laughs> avoid all of this graveyard hate. Be like, yeah, you got all the hate in the world. I'm attacking with 3-3 three, three Flyers. That costs one mana. <laughs> Pretty good uh, deal you got going there, huh? Yeah, not bad. Not too shabby. Um, overgrown Farmland, not what Ian's looking for. He would love to find the company card. Well, the collected company that is, but he's going to turn to Elite Spellbinder and be horribly disappointed that it's just a Brotherglide pathway in hand. Yeah, absolutely. And a nice removal spell off the top. Luis mm -hmm. snaps that one off. Can only cast one spell a turn. It's better than Faithless Looting that is just going to manipulate, you know, one draw from you. So not ideal yeah. here. And that's Delirium off the top. <laughs> wow. Look at this. Oh, goodness. Death by one ones. You, well, one drops. You love to see it. Yeah, go, everyone. <laughs> yeah, these uh, one drops are, are definitely hitting the gym. They are getting bigger and bigger. That's for sure. 
<laughs> this is this is like worst case scenario for Ian Burrell who finds a yeah. Lanoir elf and nothing else to deal with these pesky pigeons. So Luis is going to pick up a very nifty game number one. And for all of the interaction and removal and the whatnots that Ian had for the Phoenix deck, just nothing came together there for him. Yeah, you know all that stuff I was saying about it being such a bad mm. matchup? Of course I meant it the other way around. Um, you know, these uh, <laughs> Celestia cards are not up to snuff. No, I'm just saying that, uh, <laughs> and, you know, maybe just the way that these Phoenix decks are built now with Symmetry Sage um, being the key addition, Ledger Shredder, another yeah. card. Both of those cards don't really care about the graveyard as much and don't necessarily care about your cards being extremely cheap. Um, you know, so maybe this style of deck, the Thalia's, the... Esper Sentinels, all this, all this stuff that has pestered Phoenix in the past. Maybe it's not as bad. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't look like it. And we have known the company deck to run out of gas at certain points. It really needs to hit on that important yeah. card in Collected Company. But, you know, from Luis's side, he's going to be very pleased with this. He is still in the hunt trying to get into that league qualifier box for the World Championship. So... He'll be quite happy to pick up another win here, get him closer to the top five for the league players. Exactly. He's been right outside of the box. So, you know, he's kind of been asking himself all weekend, like, what's in the box? You know, he's trying to get there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sitting sitting pretty healthy at eighth place with 75 points. That line is Marcio at fifth with 81 points. So, you know, two match wins away, and this doesn't factor in anybody getting into the top six of this tournament. Looking at you, Shota, you know, having the best chance to do so uh, as well. That can right now, boost yeah. up Luis a little bit. So definitely yeah. still in contention and, and looking pretty good to, to do it as long as he can pick up some Ws here in Historic. That's what they'll be hoping to do. Down of the Bugbear, great draw there for Luis. That's land number three, Ledger Shredder down on the battlefield on time. And on the other side of things, we have an Inquisitor Captain early finds a Talia Guardian of Thraben and a Lanwar Elf. So great find there. All the spells are now more expensive. Talia yep. needs to go quickly. And speaking some of the cards like we were talking about with Symmetry Sage, that got a little boost. Inquisitor Captain actually did get a little bit of a nerf. You know, it just, it got a little bit more controlled. It used to be able to, you know, you could hit all these clone effects and just keep going, yeah. keep going. And that card it used to just be insane. It's still very powerful. Uh, but that was some really fun stuff to do with mm -hmm. Yorian, if you will. Oh, yeah. And with a glass pool mimic. I think glass I strung mimic, yeah. together like three glass pool mimics in a row. Oh, it was great fun. It was one of my favorite decks to play, I must say. I, I played a lot with that, <laughs> those style of decks. All right, so Ian off to a great start here. What's the follow-up going to be? It's going to be another Tangled Florahedron. So... Mana Dork number two hits the board along with an Archon of Emeria. That is the second spell for turn though. So Ledger Shred is going to say thank you very much. I'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. And here, you, if you're Luis Gavarius, you want to try to get your spells in while you can before Archon yeah. comes into play. But the combination of Esper oh, Sentinel, and Thalia, go. and Archon uh, is pretty Oof. brutal. But yeah, Pillar's going to definitely help in this scenario. Now, which one do you go yes. for? They're all so good. Oh, you gotta take care of Talia. She's making yeah. she's making a, a no fun zone, and nobody likes that. She's the fun police. <laughs> Ooh, big draw right there. Excellent draw. Skyclave apparition is gonna come down and munch on this birdie. So no, thank you. No more fun for you. And with this board that's assembled, it's just turn dude sideways and go. This is looking excellent here for Ian Burrell in game number two. Doesn't even need the scavenging ooze. Luis, I don't think has a chance here to save this. Wow. So we're going to go to a game number three. <laughs> if you are a Selesnya Company fan, that's what you want to see. Wow, we have uh, had some not so close games for our round here so far, uh, <laughs> Ailey. These have been kind of beatings in each direction. Just yeah. decks working on, you know, firing on all cylinders uh, for these first two rounds that we've been covering. And now for Luis Scott Vargas fans, Luis on the play, you know, is a big advantage in these kind of aggressive matches, being able to get a threat down, and then after Ian starts playing threats, be able to react to those while you have a yeah. threat. That's kind of how this deck, you know, uh, is is best utilized when it can kind of be that tempo style deck. Ooh, that Ooh, is a good. That's hand. a good one. Yeah. Hello. 
I'd be very happy about that one. Not too much disruption, but you're really proactive with this hand. This yeah. hand hits hard as far as like, even turn three, Symmetry Sage into Ledger Shredder, turn three, you just kind of go crazy. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be one hell of a fast game. Now that's what I love about Historic. You don't tend to have these, okay, besides Golgari food, you don't tend <laughs> to have these long grindy matchups when there's no foot involved. But yes, this is what yes. I love to see. It's just like, <laughs> right, I have my dudes down. You don't have removal. GG, next match. Let's go. And a little brutal there for Ian Burrell. Like, that was already a mulligan. So do you want to go to mm -hmm. five or keep a little bit of a clunky hand on the draw? Decides to keep it. Draws a Tangled Florhedron. So another decision right on turn one to either play that as a land to guarantee you're allowed to play a three drop or try to keep it, <laughs> play the Tangled Florhedron, uh, which is also, you know, a little uh, risky. That made me so happy. Attack with a zero power to assert dominance. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Luis uh, likes to still have fun while, uh, while he oh, plays yeah. some magic. You got to love that. He knows how to put on a show. I appreciate yep. that. Oof, now yep. double shredder, triple shredder even. Now I know why the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had so much difficulty with this dude. <laughs> wow, this is powerful. Being able to uh, draw a, but just really sculpt your hand here and make mm -hmm. these cards quite large. Do you want that third Symmetry Sage to side, or the second Symmetry Sage to side <laughs> to keep it? Yeah, if not, why not? Portable hole, yeah. nice find here. Can also play the backside of Branch Love Pathway just to exile something here with Skyclave Apparition because, yeah, you're going to be dead to pigeons very quickly here, Ian, if you don't keep them under control. Yeah, interesting. I, I really feel like you have to be mana efficient and play one of the three drops at least. Interesting to choice between Skyclave or Archon, but here's this expressive iteration. It's not going to be able to cast a second card, so you're really putting mm -hmm. some emphasis on finding a land to put into exile, there and Unholy Heat is a great pickup. Something Oof. that you can cast oh, on Ian's turn uh, is, is going to be very valuable here. Oh, that expressive iteration was Chef's Kiss. Four oh, points yeah. of damage in, down to 12. Goes Ian Burrell, there's Italia. No fourth land though, unfortunately. So can't go Skyclave into Portable Hole or anything like that. So where do we go from here? Is it time to get the skies filled with Elite Spellbinder? What's the plan? I would think just Skyclave here to uh, and get that saying, going. Archon's down. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> can't exactly. Even can't even get double spell. two spells. Yeah, curse you, Archon. <laughs> it's an incredible card, that's for sure. Yeah, it's really good, except when you need it to not be so good so you can do more things, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, opponent, could you kill this, please? Thank you. Hey, okay, oh, so there, there is the delirious Unholy Heat to deal with Archon, nice. and now the shields are down, and <laughs> Luis is really going to go crazy here with three one-mana spells in hand. You got to think it's birdie time. I think so. Let's just kill everything on Ian's side of the battlefield. Let's Oof. make our Might birds ginormous. I'm going to get another 1-1 one, one for the funsies and going to smack you for 7 down to 5. <laughs> Your turn, go. Land? No land. So not even a chance here to get Collected Company going. Can take care of the biggest thing on the battlefield, but, you know, this is just going to be real bad news bears <laughs> here, unfortunately, for Ian. Yeah, and Symmetry Sage really showing off how great it is with Ledger Shredder, making it a base power three, and then getting those pow those counters on top of it. Now that's just game right uh, here. Impressive stuff. Man, what a slap fest between <laughs> these two decks. Absolutely awesome stuff. So Luis picks up a win, continues onwards towards...